Yo, what up? This is Keith Mervin. You're checking out Who Mag TV. Death Squad L O D. Who Mag? Who Mag? Who Mag? Who Mag? It was uh, surreal because I was like doing it like off instinct, not really making preparation for it because I came from school, jail, school in the streets. So all through that time, I had these rhymes and the style I was developing. And Eric Sermon chopped it up and put it into a beat for me. And it was very unconscious the way I did it. I still can't really remember the days in the studio and building it because it was just like bam, 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 bam. When I had got elected, Jive set it up because he was a producer for Jive. So when I went in the studio, it was just me and him. He was sitting at the board. I remember that day I walked in. I didn't really know who he was, but then I learned who he was, and then it became monumental. And now I know his mother, and we support him every year for his birthday and things of that nature. But it was memorable because it was just me and him. You know how artists and producers have posses? It was just me and him in a nice, clean, big studio with the SSL board. The Enigma was special to me because it was the time where I was facing uh, three years in jail. I was uh, going back and forth to court, and I was uh, in court the day it dropped. So it was like, it was real raw, and it was the follow-up to the most beautiful thing in the world. So I was like, kind of new in the industry, starting to see a lot of things, meeting a lot of other MCs, and I was really inspired by the hardcore beats and rhymes. No, I don't feel that way because Eric Sermon was already Eric Sermon and he has his own style and things of that nature. And I didn't bear witness to Eric really listening to Jay Diller's music and I spent a lot of time with him on, on that time. I think Jay Diller do influence Eric Sermon this day and age. I got a beat tape from Jay Diller that nobody got and I showed Eric and his eyes lit up. Five Dog was the one who would always, I would come across when we was on Jive. He was at my gold release party, and I would always see him from time to time. That was the person who I really connected with. Me and Q-Tip has a personal good relationship now, but Five Dog was the one to always, I always seemed to have a rapport with at that time. Well, I was called to the studio by um, the track master. And actually, I was working on a song on LL Cool J's album. I was doing the hook. And then they asked me to do a verse for that. So uh, I actually was the first person to lay my verse. And then they had acquired other artists. And other people laid their verse after Keith Murray laid his verse. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sure if they heard it, but I'm pretty sure they did. So I spearheaded that record. When I was growing up, I always felt that I was LL Cool J. I knew all his lyrics, all his albums, and he really inspired me. So Eric Sermon had a relationship with him. And for him to come and support Keith Murray and do records with me was incredible. It really boosted my um, confidence. That was all the street artists that was emerging at the time coming up. And we was all the best of friends. It was never a problem with the crews. Def Jam had the good energy. It was the place to be, man. So every night, we just was friendly competition. You know what I'm saying? Nobody really was like uh, worried about who went on first, who went on last. It was, you know, no egos. It just showed us that how to be a role model in the industry coming up to grow your business and brand and become the legends that we all are. I was in the studio one day and the board it was a lexicon, the mixing board, and I was writing rhymes. So I incorporated me being a lyrical individual with mixing it with music and engineering and sound. And I just came up from there. It was something that I had the lyrics to because I studied the science of life and mathematics and I um, analyzed the many different characters of the people that I come across every day. So it was just a strange encounter in the intersections of life. And Halloween, it was Halloween when I wrote that song. 
we actually did a record with Biz on the Death Squad album. And Biz came through and he always is a friend of the squad. So it just sounded like it was saying he's Keith Murray, he's Biz Markie. So Red Man did the hook and Eric did the beat. And it came out dope. Eric Sherman new album. So you could go, uh, he got a Kickstarter uh, razor that you can go and support. So we all on that, everybody's on there. I'm pretty sure you probably seen it online already, but we concentrating on that. And I'm working on my freestyle series with DJ Goomba. I did the big pun, beware, deep cover, Nas, uh, New York State of Mind, Rock Kim, I Ain't No Joke, Cypress Hill, Killer Man. And I'm hitting them, hitting them, hitting them every couple of weeks right now. So I warm up for my album, which Eric Sermon just gave me a new playlist. So I'm writing that out right now. Most Beautiful Thing in the World Part 2. You heard it first here. It was dope. I mean, uh, if you want to go online and look it up on uh, Instagram, I mean, um, YouTube, you can. It was really dope. The parlor was packed. There was a lot of uh, heavy hitters in the house that night. And I had the whole LOD with me. And it was real dope. New York City, there was a lot of energy in the house. And it was very loud. You could barely hear yourself. Oh, that's dope, because DJ Honda is a very dope uh, producer and a, a very great uh, DJ. And he's from Japan. And Honda, he can, he knows English, but he you can barely understand sometimes what he's saying. So the music brought us together and it broke the language barrier. And I went to Japan and people really knew my songs and they didn't know two words of English, but hip hop records. Oh, that's the saying that we always say, like when somebody say something, and we might be surprised, we're like, what? Say word. So every time I was playing beats, and I used to just say that all the time. So, and Redman would say it too, Eric would say it. So when the beat came on, we just started vibing, and the hook just came about. Like, the energy from the room. It's really dope, because he's a producer that was under Eric Sermon. So he actually was doing a lot of the beats with E, and Eric brought him to my attention. And I uh, talked to him from this day still, so we formed a relationship. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I dress better than any gay man. Loud and flashy, baby. Keep Murray L.O.D. <laughs>